All right, so today we're going to be installing the iPad into the dash. Just got a couple other little things to wrap up. I'll be covering those in this video. Um, also customizing this. I'm going to uh, throw a G.I. Joe AK in her hands. Remove the guitar with a Dremel, blah, blah, blah. Made her skirt a little shorter. Dropped it down on her hips a little more. Boom. Oh, shit. Custom. Okay. So the first thing you gotta do is remove your tombstone. Yeah, kinda like that. And then uh, make it look a little neater. That's uh, more like it. Okay, now, once you've got your tombstone customized, first thing is that this right here is gonna get in the way of your iPad. So, as you can see, it'll fit just barely. And you don't want to remove these because that's kinda what helps keep the dash pressed in and with it being right here where the iPad's going to be. We definitely want to keep those so that it holds the dash tight against the iPad. So what you do is, as you're cutting down, if you can see here, this level right here, this step. I took that step out and then I took some more away. And what I ended up wanting to do, this is really hard to kind of see, but there's a lip under the AC controls. If you see that, like it, it lines up with the AC controls and then it drops down and then it goes back towards the stereo. So what I wanted to do was cut all of this off right to the back of this lip so that the iPad would be sitting flush against the back of this surface. So as far forward as I could get it. So then you cut, because you've got this line as your guiding line, that's how deep you're gonna go forward. Then you take a line and you can either mark it or do like me and be a crazy fuck and just take your Dremel or your cutting wheel and cut down to here. And then same thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Cut. This is so hard to do one-handed. Cut from here over to here. So that now, <clears throat> what you end up with is a totally flush section right here. And you even cut back on these, cut this off because that's where your charging port's going to be. And cut this one down because you don't need it. And then you cut these fins back and back here. And take these off so you don't tear them up. And then uh, you end up smoothing these sides here just a little bit. If you take off too much, then your iPad will be rattling around in here. And you definitely don't want that. So, you get it to where the iPad will fit, and as you can see now, it literally just almost snaps in, okay? And then you realize when you flip it over that the home button is going to kind of hit. So what I did was notched the uh, case a little bit there so your finger just slides in perfectly. I'm going to cover it with some tape or another sticker or some whatever. Um, so then, you can see, let me turn it on. Um, this is what you end up with in your dash. Now, I went ahead and uh, made it so that once I got the major cuts with the cutting wheel, I went in with the Dremel and I smoothed everything as smooth as possible so that it wouldn't, there wouldn't be any air gaps or light gaps and then any dust or dirt to get trapped in there. And then I thought from the iPad vibrating all around in the car. So I, uh, I didn't want the plastic to cut into the screen or the screen protector rather. So I took some of this silicone gasket maker we had out back and I put the tiniest little bead all the way around. So it's like a, the thickness of an O-ring and then I let it set up all night. So now it's like it's hard rubber. So when you put the iPad in there, the iPad's going to snap to the O-ring and seal up tight. And then you're not going to have air and debris and shit getting through there. You kind of see how thin I got that plastic. It's just the thickness of the plastic itself. I basically just took off the rear wall. So now that the iPad is ready to mount, I've got to strap it to this somehow. Mount this in the dash. We'll have the power coming out here. We're going to have the audio coming out here to a wire going over and around to an actual knob for a potentiometer so that you can have actual hard line control on the audio coming out going to the amp. Um, it's a lot easier than having to 
find the buttons on the screen and do that. So you can just volume up and down right there. It also gives you a better signal to the amp because you're sending out a full signal from here and then you're just adjusting the actual volume level with the potentiometer knob. So now we're in the car. Here's where a lot of people want to give up wiring. Most people hate it. But if you have a Miata, you have pretty much the same wiring as everybody else. Um, from what I've seen, the wire colors may vary slightly and the amount of wires may vary, but uh, for general purposes, the positions in the harnesses and the harnesses themselves are the same throughout all the years. So here's what you're gonna have. If you have just the stock single den radio, single den means it's the thickness of the heater control unit right here. That's a single den. Double den is when you have two of those. So the big touch screens, that's why that's this size. A double den will fit there. A lot of stock Miatas with the better package came with a uh, amplified bottom end that would power either the headrest speakers and slash or the uh, subs. There's a sub built in down here as well. So I have the headrests, I have the subs, I have the door speakers, and I have the tweeters. So the way they wire that is uh, the door speakers come off if you look at this harness it's kind of self-explanatory you have power and ground and illumination and key on and all this other stuff over here and then they separated it perfectly you see these four wires and they kind of match one's red and white one's red and green one's blue and one's blue and yellow so one of these is positive and negative for the right side one of these is positive and negative for the left side now if you have doors and tweeters they're 99.9% .9 of the time gonna be running off of the same wire setup. Just the tweeters are gonna have what's called a crossover. A crossover just eliminates bass frequency so that the tweeters only tweet the highs. All right, so this would be probably our rights, you know, and this would be our left. So the way to test this is to either take a nine volt battery with a couple wires coming off of it and stick them in there, uh, you know, positive and negative, and you'll hear either like a boop, boop, on the speaker that means you've got that and you can switch them around uh, also you can do what I did which was take a headphone cable and cut it and then take the wires and split them apart plug it into my iPhone and then plugged it into my iPhone and then I had the music playing and I just plugged the wires into here I could hear the right side speakers would start working and then I plugged them into the red ones and the left side speakers would start working so that's a good way to test as well so you know that not only you have the right wires but that your speakers are in good condition and that they're wired up like that one didn't make any noise so I think inside the door the wires are probably jacked or something so I need to investigate that these worked fine so what you do then, if you have more than just a single den stock radio, or you have just a general uh, Mazda Miata, you're probably gonna still have these wires in here too. And a lot of people may be wondering what these wires are for, if they have them. These plugged into the back of the powered amplifier on the bottom of the stock stereo. This one is for the wires for the power for the amplifier itself. And then there's speaker wires. So if you look here, you can kind of see um, there's blues that match and there's reds that match. Two of them to go to the positive and negative for the headrest on the right, two of them go to the positive and negative on the headrest on the left. These are for the subwoofers that are built into the lower back speakers and obviously blue and blue and red and red. So you can wire all of these up because these are all post amp. The only ones that didn't go into the amp were the door speakers. So this is all amplified stuff, the headrests and the door subs so you have two options here <clears throat> when you have your line coming out of your iPad it's gonna have four wires if you do it correctly uh, you're gonna have a right positive and negative and a left positive and negative four wires total so what you want to do here would be to either run them into these wires and you'll realize real quick that the output from an iPad is headphone output it's not very loud at all so then you don't want to run straight into these. What you're going to do is your iPad's going to be here. You're going to have your headphone jack coming out here and running around and over to a, a volume toggle. That volume toggle is then going to run back down through here. And it's just a RCA cable. You can cut up an RCA cable because again, this is preamp. It doesn't matter. It's very low power. It's going to run through here and over to here. And there's a hole back here behind your seat. You can literally see straight through if you've taken your carpet out. There's daylight to the trunk. You just drag it through there and run it to your amp. However, if you're going to do like me, 
I'm gonna buy one of the very small eBay amps. Uh, it's 200 watts, I think, is what I'm gonna use to power these speakers. And then I've got a little 500 watt that's gonna power the subs and the headrest speakers. And those are gonna go right back here. Totally different option. For this instance, what we're gonna do is run it back to an amp. The world's filthiest, I mean, filthiest amp. This literally was in the bed of a truck that someone gave us. You're gonna mount this somewhere. I'm probably gonna put it in the spare tire on a little uh, like plastic mount or something to keep it from grounding out. So you have your ground running to the ground. Power with a fuse coming off of this right to here. Very, very easy. The remote, this tricks a lot of people. Normally, because this was for testing, I wanted to make sure this amp actually worked. So I just ran the remote off the power. So when I powered it up, it would just turn on. This is the on switch. When this remote line sees power of any kind, it turns the amp on. And that's why when people do this wrong, their car battery dies because their amp's constantly pulling power, trying to fill up the capacitors to produce amplified power. If you turn this switch off with your radio, because it's telling the amp that the radio is on and the remote line will be on whenever power to the radio is on. You can also find a key on whenever the key is on, run that down to here. And that's what I'm gonna be doing is key on to there. And again, this is only temporary until my little amplifier comes in the mail that I'm gonna put behind the dash. We got power from the battery, ground, power coming from a key section over here. There's something over here that only comes on with the keys on, I assure you. If not, you can run a wire through this hole I was talking about. There's daylight over there, I promise. And then uh, you have a left and a right channel. So what you're gonna do is get two really fat pieces of monster cable and connect them all up so you got a right channel and then you'd have a left channel then you're going to run those through the hole your rca that was coming from the front is going to connect to here and then set your settings however you feel necessary based on the amp you have so the headphone jack coming from the ipad comes to here power ground remote line from the key on Make sure your fuses are good. And then two fat monster cables going back up through the hole. And then those guys will come back up here. And what you're gonna do is either keep these intact or cut them and splice them into those wires, keeping right side and left side separate, that's all. So your wire that's coming up from the back, that's the right side channel, tie into all these wires that are going to the right side channels. One that's coming up from the left side channel, tying to all these wires that are coming up from the left side channel. And they're all gonna be amplified now. So you do wanna use a fat monster cable or some nice speaker cable. Do not use lamp cord or extension cord. <sighs> I'm not gonna argue with people about that. I know it's thicker cable and blah, 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 but just don't. It really fucking butt hurts car guys and I'm tired of hearing butt hurt car guys crying about shit like that. All right, so. Once you get your wires back up here, all your stuff's wired back in, your iPad's in place, power. The power is going to be coming out over here behind the little console thingy, and you're going to whip it around behind here. Same thing as before. Like I said, you can use a tester. You can look on the12volt.com, T-H-E-1-2-V-O-L-T.com. I'll put it right here or something. Go to the 12volt.com and look up your year Mazda Miata and hit car stereo, and it'll tell you which one of these wires is constant, ground and key on key on and ground is what you need you're going to literally take your 2.1 amp not a regular usb charger you have to literally ebay search 2.1 amp usb 2.1 amp charger you can get the single you can get the dual you're only going to be able to access at one time so i just got the single it's like three bucks four bucks shipped get it here it'll be a little usb charger the same kind that you plug into the cigarette lighter like that that has the little usb plug on it you're just going to buy one of those and inside of it's going to be something like this now you can either break it apart like i do and solder a wire some nice decent wire onto the positive and negative ports or you can just break apart the little thing that plugs in and there will be two wires coming off. The one that's black obviously is the ground and the one that's red is obviously the positive. If it's not obvious, then what you'll see is there's the two prongs that press into the sides and then there's the one right in the middle. The one right in the middle is the positive and the thing that connects to the two side prongs is the negative, the ground. So you're gonna wire those into your ground 
and your key on so that this USB charger, 2.1 amp, sitting back here, gets power only when you turn the key on, just like the radio does. So the second you turn the key on, this thing gets power. It powers the USB cable that's spooled up back here, turns on power to the iPad. The iPad kicks on. It turns on the last song that was playing, unpauses it, shows up your maps, whatever, wherever you left off. And then the audio out is going to be coming out here, going over to your potentiometer. Potentiometer is going to be going back through the back through an RCA cable to the amp or down to here to an amp. And then the amp is going to provide power back up to here. And again, if you don't use your constant battery connection and you put your amps back here, you can use that constant battery connection to power the amps. They're very small amps. You're not pushing a system. You're not bumping them 12, son. So it doesn't matter. You can put the little amps back here, your little USB charger. You power the USB charger off the ground and the accessory. Power the amp off of the constant and the ground with the key on powering the remote when the key on wire hits the remote the amps will cut on the key on turns on the ipad charger ipad charger turns on the ipad and then the audio comes out goes through the potentiometer to control the volume back into the amps amps power the signal up and then push it into your subs your headrests and your door speakers and that's it if you want to watch my other video on how to set up your iPad software for making it more like a Pioneer or whatever, Double Den, in dash Navi, click on my personal channel. It should be on the right or the left somewhere, featured channels. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to have a 500 subscriber giveaway. As soon as I hit 500 subs, I'm going to announce something cool. I'll pick somebody randomly. And uh, yeah, be looking forward to that. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.